Yes, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm uh, going to move us to the most important sense of us human beings, which is vision. More importantly, I'm going to speak about continuous loss of visual field, also known as glaucoma. This is the largest unmet clinical need in ophthalmology. It's the leading cause for irreversible blindness in the world. 80 million patients are suffering from glaucoma. That number is going to grow to 100 million within the next 15 years. So that's as if one third of the US population would become blind. Prevalence is 2% in the adult population, uh, aged 40 and above, and in Asia it's even higher, it's 3% of the population. Now, there is, of course, standard of care. Uh, glaucoma is being addressed, but it's a risk factor that's being addressed, and it is focusing on the eye, which is elevated IOP, intraocular pressure, which is not a good thing, so it needs to be addressed, and that is being done by the means of uh, eye drops, surgery or minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. And even if the IOP intraocular pressure is then brought down to a normal limit, the problem is that loss of visual field continues. And then as a matter of fact, 40% of all glaucoma patients worldwide do not have elevated IOP. And another number, 70% in Asia, so again, a much higher number in Asia, 70% of all glaucoma patients do not have elevated IOP. So clearly, we need a paradigm shift and we need to look at more than just the eye, and that is the optic nerve. The eye is just a camera and the CPU is the brain, the cortex, and in between you've got uh, the optic nerve. We need to focus on the optic nerve. Why? Because glaucoma is a neuropathy disease of the optic nerve. If you look here on the left-hand side, you see the comparison between the healthy eye, this is the um, uh, optic nerve going into the eye, and here you see the diseased eye. You see a thinning out of the axons, you see loss of structure. And the reason we lose structure is we have oxidative stress, so chronic stress on a cellular level. That leads to a halt in metabolism, which in turn then, of course, which perceives, uh, uh, is perceived by the patient as loss of vision because there's no function. And if nothing is done about that, ultimately the cells will die. This is what we see here. We see a thinned out a structure of the optic nerve. Now, fortunately, uh, our central nervous system is based on electrical activity. And this is what we are applying now in ophthalmology. These are our atronic um, stimulation goggles, which have four electrodes embedded in the periorbital space. It's an outpatient treatment, which you see here, and it allows us to now create an electrical field, and we're stimulating from the eye through the optic nerve all the way to the center of vision uh, into the cortex. And we know that the current arrives in the brain because although the patients are blindfolded by the stimulation goggles, they perceive flashlights, so-called phosphenes. That's a neuronal signal that travels along the optic nerve to the center of vision. We have CE mark on the therapy. We've, uh, the therapy is applied in 10 sessions, so 800 patients times 10, 8,000 sessions already done. And not a single SAE, not a single serious adverse event with that therapy so far. Now, there's no magic to it. This is just uh, neurophysiology. Um, these are preclinical data. Uh, the mode of action behind electrical stimulation in your telomic space has widely been published. I'm just showing three examples here. Uh, electrical current triggers a lot of activities on a neuronal level, such as neurotrophic factors uh, being set in motion, but also perfusion going up, which is a very good thing. And the effects of optic nerve stimulation are threefold. We have one effect, which is called neuroprotection. As the cell now gets back into it, being re-engaged into activity, can protect itself because it nurtures itself with metabolism. Secondly, functional neurorestoration. We see on this side, there's a flat liner. The red, sorry, the red um, frame always shows the animals that were after optic nerve injury on the sham group, randomized to, and the green frame show the animals that actually did get optic nerve stimulation. And you see the difference also here. We see here, we do have, again, a visually evoked potential, which we don't have in the animals that have not been treated. Likewise, structurally, we see sprouting hours of actions on the right-hand side. We don't see any. So clearly, with electrical stimulation, we can accomplish those three effects in animals. Now, let's look at humans. These are now one-year data, 101 eyes. Uh, so the, the treatment was given for 10 days, nothing about 350 days. And then we looked again at the perimetry, at the visual field of these eyes. And we see that in 63%, 63% of all treated eyes at one year follow-up, we have no further loss of visual field. As a matter of fact, 59%, we do see an improved visual field. You see this also here on the box plot. Oh, I'm sorry, on the box plot. 
um, that we uh, had on the on the um, on the right hand side. The the data were published uh, 15 months 18 months ago in uh, bioelectronic medicine, um, and so in the public uh, public domain. So those are patients that had elevated IUP, were treated with standard of care, were coming to normal level, but continue to lose visual field. And with these patients then, these uh, um, uh, results were obtained. And remember, I, I talked about normal tension glaucoma patients, those who do not present with elevated um, intraocular pressure. Also there, 12 months data, we see 69% of all treated eyes. We have an improved visual field at 12 month follow-up compared to baseline. Also, these data were presented last year, World Glaucoma Congress, and we are just got accepted yesterday for European Glaucoma Congress with the latest data we're going to present uh, in the beginning of June in Dublin. You see here again the perimetries, right eye, left eye of a normal tension glaucoma patient. In the red frame, baseline, and again in the right frame, you see six months and 12 months, three months and 12 months follow up. So we see a clear improvement of the visual field in these patients. The business model, we are um, selling those codes so that a treatment uh, cycle can be given um, uh, uh, for $4,500 to $6,000 uh, to the eye clinic. So the eye clinic gets this by email. We have zero cards. We have no inventory. We have um, no logistics. It's unlimited in its scalability. And then those 10 sessions can be done. It needs to, the code is needed to operate the system. The system is either sold or leased. If we only take 5% of SAM at 26 billion, we come at a 1.3 billion share of market business opportunity. Currently, as it's a novel technology, there's no coverage, it's self-pay. We're gonna move then to private pay through um, insurance companies before we move into reimbursement. On a competitive side, there's three players out there who are using electrical stimulation ophthalmology, two of them, uh, Chiba University from Japan, as well as Okovision from Germany, are not addressing glaucoma. They're addressing uh, uh, retinitis pigmentosa. It's a hereditary disease. There's only one center in Germany, the Savi Center, that only in that eye clinic by the founder is using electrical stimulation for a variety of indications, including glaucoma. You see the price level down there as well. We are fundraising, that's why I'm here. We are fundraising for US market access for an FDA trial to the tune of 12 million. We have a very strong investment case because we de-risked. We have experience from six countries in Europe. We have long-term clinical data. We actually will start U.S. clinical trials in Q2 of 2024, IP with 20 patents. And again, there's a large unmet clinical need. And there's a reason why uh, Glaucos, which is the number one glaucoma medtech company out there, has a market cap of 4.3 billion, actually uh, tripled uh, their market cap since they were launched. User proceeds will go into the US clinical trial, about half of the 12 million. Then R&D, we're gonna have a complementary uh, unit that will uh, be used for a home use um, that is gonna complement the uh, uh, system that's being used in the uh, outpatient setting. And then, of course, team, a commercial team in Europe and most importantly, also a US team. Here you see the team, uh, very committed to the right to site uh, for all patients, that's the mission we are on. And we are very fortunate also to have an excellent uh, uh, team of advisors with, uh, in Europe, Professor Erb from Berlin, uh, here in the United States, Jeffrey, Professor Jeffrey Goldberg from Stanford University, uh, Professor Andrew Ivak, whom I visited yesterday from University of San Francisco, and then also Dr. Sadri, who is founder uh, and CEO of the Visionary Eye Institute in Newport Beach. With that, I invite you to come and see us, contact us, see me. I'm here until uh, Thursday evening, so we can uh, make you part of the success investing as we bring neuromodulation to ophthalmology, because that's at the end of the day what we do. Thank you for your attention.